let's talk about the final belt setup and adding them in with the combined setup and check the results. This is version 58 that's currently running on my machine in the background and I'm getting pretty decent results. This is incorporating the belts from version 56 that we saw in the last video. They're not vibrating, they look pretty well damped and it looks pretty great. For the belt setups, the results are so good that I probably will never use the tetrahedral mesh ever again, especially for high speed moving objects like this character running at high speed. They just can't keep up and I have to set incredibly high values on them and set the solver at very high values and it just takes forever and I'm not getting decent results in any event. Whereas the cloth combined with struts seems to be very good results and they're doing exactly what I want and the sim times are very minimal. Let's talk about the attach. The attach here, I did add a little bit of damping ratio, 0 0.03. You don't want to go too high on these because it'll make it look like your belts are moving in a gelatinous material or water. So try and keep those values as low as possible and they'll start to look good. And as for the pin, I kept the pin uh, because it does give good results and it does kind of give a hint to the points where I want them to be and follow animation, but at very low values, just very low values. So take a look at the final sim if you want to see what the values are in this version 58 of the file. Moving on to troubleshooting the combined setup, once I got the belts working, this is version 57, this is a previous version, you can see I was running into areas where the cloak would get snagged on the sword. You can see the problem persisted all the way through. The way I got around this is by animating the transform sphere that I used earlier to push these areas inside to the underarms, this cloth, this cloak inside the underarm. So let's take a look what happens in addition to that. You can see there's a lot of bunching up going here, going on here. So I had considered maybe adding some more attach to hold the leg flaps down here so that it wouldn't happen, but I don't have that problem in version 58. So if you actually see version 58, the problem seems to have solved itself. So if we look at that version, we can see that it's looking pretty good back there. So let's go back to version 57 so we can see the other problem that I encountered. Let's blow away the cloak here so we can get a better idea. Okay, and you can see what the problem is here, and that is the belts are bunching up here. And this is occurring right after the hurdle. So what I suggest, what I figured out was kind of happening was there's just not enough room between the abdominals and the thigh. And the thigh makes it up so close, very close, it creates this sort of little crot little area where no matter what we did with the collision object volume erode method, there was still just not enough room for this thick belt to kind of penetrate several layers of cloth here. So I decided to do a little soft transform on the collision body here. We can go here and take a look, click this guy here, and we'll go to a problematic frame. So we'll, you can see here where the keyframes are. So if we went to this area just right here in the middle, you can see with this on, I'm getting a little bit of difference here. You can see I just added a little area and then I moved the abs up a little bit here too to create a little space. I did the same thing for the other side of the leg because the other side of the leg is where we're seeing the bunching that I just showed. It's really high, it's really penetrating up here. You can even see the knees going into the sword here. So there's a lot of areas where problems can occur in abrupt motion. But I decided to go ahead and add some, some serious area in here. And it looks ugly, but it achieves the job. And it's only for a few frames, so you can't. it's not really noticeable underneath all of the cloth. And it just helps your cloth sim that much more. So with these in place, I got the better simulation that was the result of version 58. The sword penetrates on frame 1060, and I just didn't want it to be involved pinching the cloak in any way, shape, or form. So if we look at that frame right here, you can actually see that the sword was going into the arm. And earlier I had just turned off collisions in the undershirt and the top shirt with this sword and so that no pinning would occur, but I had not done that with the cloak. And I just didn't want to go through another long sim to discover that that was happening. So I just decided to create some breathing room here while I was at it. But it looks like version 58, it might have been a problem. So it's a good thing I added that little extra room there. Going back to version 57, you can see another issue I'm having here is that the leg flaps of the top shirt keep flapping up into the chest. And as the sim progresses, 
The arm gets tangled up in there and it looks just like a complete mess. One of the other adjustments I did was increase the attach strength on the leg flaps attach node here. So I just increased it by a power of 10 here and that seems to have worked in version 58 and it kept the flaps down so that they wouldn't get tangled up there in the arm. And lastly I made some adjustments to the solver itself. I actually lowered sub steps from 25 to 20 and lowered constraint iterations from 500 to 400. I don't think I need that many because I don't have the tet mesh now and as a result it actually looked pretty good and simmed a lot faster. I decided to increase smoothing iterations uh, just because it's not that expensive and it looks a lot better and it averages out the positions of any weird odd points so you don't get weird spikes. So that's very nice. Also I increased collision passes from 12 to 15 just to get up a few more extra interleaved collision passes uh, because I lowered sub steps here. And post collision passes. I realized that I had left that at a very low level and according to the documentation you are supposed to set this to a value that is equal to the number of stacked layers that you have plus two. In the area that I'm having the most problem which is that area where the chest meets the thigh and all these belts are getting smashed I counted with the pants, the undershirt, the top shirt, and all of the belts. We have about seven layers if you count the top and bottom of each one of the belts. So I decided to just go with the number of nine and it actually looks pretty good in version 58. So we're going to stick with that going forward. Again I kept layer shock at six. I wanted to make sure that the layers didn't get munched up and it looks like six is a decent value. 